Hi everybody! I'm being crazy today. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa to everyone out there or whatever you celebrate. I hope that your week is about as, cra as crazy as I'm representing, right? Aren't we all just a little like, oh, it's going to happen any minute now. And I can't even believe it. I'm not even close to being ready. Okay, let me get my regular glasses on so I can see what I'm doing here. I have a story today. I have a sweater of the day. I have some FOs because I finished some Christmas knitting. Not all of my Christmas knitting, but I finished fun. I'm wearing my ugly Christmas sweater. I think it's a pajama top. I got it at Goodwill. Um, it feels like a plastic pajama top, but those are knit stitches. So had to have it, right? Hopefully, I will have edited together a little montage for you of some of the decorations around my house this Christmas, which are also crazy over the top of a Santa collection. And I have been given Santas my entire life. And about five years ago, I said to my husband and daughter, that's it, I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not bringing it all up from the basement. It's too much work. I'm not enjoying it. And I don't think that that's a good way to enter the Christmas season. And so they said, oh, you can't not put up the Santas. And so I had a friend say, I'll put up your Santas. You pay me, I'll come and do it. So probably for the last five years, I've had she and her sister come. Uh, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and they spent the entire day dragging boxes out of my basement and playing Christmas music, and they have a ball. They love doing it, and I say, I'll be back at 4 o'clock, <laughs> and they put out all the Santas, all the knitting Santas. I have knitting snowmen and knitting Santas and Mrs. Claus. I mean, it's everywhere in my house. We do a lot of entertaining, um, but it's just all over, and so... We do take it all down, though. New Year's Eve day. I have to rally the troops and say, okay, guys, it's time to get it all done. And then the house feels really empty, right? After that, you really feel like you've purged and cleaned everything, even though all you've really done is just put it in boxes and taken it to the basement. <laughs> so anyway, so much for my goofy introduction today. I'm getting started a little late. I'm going to lose my light. Um, my daughter Kylie was home this weekend, and she and I... I went to lunch today and I had to go pick up a present for my husband um, down where the Taco John's is. Um, you guys all know that I'm a huge fan of tacos and there are not many Taco John's restaurants in the Twin Cities area. There are only a couple and we have to drive a good bit to get to one. But it was on her way back to college and on her way, if you're in the metro area, there's one in Shakopee. And so it's the south, south southernmost part of the Twin Cities on this side, and um, that is also where Billy's Toggery is. If you if you have a husband, man, son, uh, grandfather in your life, um, Bill's Toggery is an old-fashioned men's store where you get great customer service, and um, they have big and tall. Um, a number of the Minnesota Vikings um, shop there, but it's you know it's that old. And my husband really likes it. He struggles to shop for clothes for work. And Billy will call him and say, uh, Ross, we got some medium sized slim fit shirts in. Why don't you stop down? I put a couple aside for you. And my husband loves that, right? Because where can you find that anymore? And then I don't have to go with him because he can go down and Billy will tell him, this sport coat goes with this tie and this shirt and these pants go with this shirt. And then it's kind of like Granimals, right? He has little tags kind of in his head with everything that goes together and coordinates so that he, you know, is set. So I went down and got him a 
he doesn't watch this, so it's not a problem. I got went down and got him a couple of uh, dress shirts. Um, looked around, he wants a pair of um, boots for Christmas too, but I just didn't feel like I could pick those out. So I'm getting a, kind of a late start today. And here's the dog saying hello. He thought I was a little crazy when I was dancing. And I have someone pulling up in my driveway. So I'll be right back. That was my friend Renee, nitroverted, delivering yarn. How many people can say during the middle of a podcast that they had a yarn delivery at their front door? <laughs> she and I purchased this uh, yarn from the Sun Valley Fibers January Thaw Knitting Retreat last January. And we are going to make a buffalo plaid in Vikings colors, Minnesota Vikings colors. So we are sharing the kit and we hadn't gotten around to dividing the kit out and getting it getting it shared. So she divided it and she's getting started and the Vikings won yesterday. So now we're back in a better mood about the Vikings. And so um, we might have a chance to make it into the playoffs so we can get those hats knit. <laughs> anyway, let me start go today ahead. with a bit of disclaimer. Last week I got vertigo and I am still having some temporary side effects from that. I don't know if any of you have ever had this before, but it's a doozy. I had it all day one day and it was manageable, but I went into urgent care and um, cause I was going to the chiropractor later and I thought about, you know, setting the crystals in your ears, that's a whole thing. And so I went into urgent care and sure enough, he laid me back on the table and hung my head off the table and tipped it to the right and my eyeballs just went. And he said, well, we know what that is. So they were going this way. And he said, if your eyeballs go this way, when you tip your head back and to the side and hang it off the table, that it's brain related. It can be a tumor or things like that. But if they go this way, then it's ear related. And, um, and he actually, right in urgent care, did the procedure where you set your crystals in your ear. He said, you have a piece in your ear that has, you know, about this. I don't know if this is actually what it looks like, but this is what he said to me. And so he set my ears and I was feeling better. And then I went to the chiropractor that afternoon and told him that I had had, you know, vertigo and they set my ears and then he laid me back on the table and I just, the room just went around. And he said, okay, we're not gonna be doing a lot of treatment on you today, Corey, we're going to set your ears. And it just seems like I'm still, although it's much better, I'm still a little lightheaded, a little, and I haven't gotten super organized today to, to get this podcast pulled off in like Kind of one go through so it's going to kind of be edited into a bunch of different pieces and i just wanted to let you know that this may not be my best work and <laughs> there's already <laughs> a lower st standard i'm really not putting myself down i i am but i don't feel terrible about the podcast <laughs> i just want you to know that it just um sometimes it gets a little and i think how are you go gobbling this together how are you, you know, getting this put together and getting it out into one coherent thought process? Because I'm kind of like this all the time. So anyway, just wanted to give a little disclaimer. Let's go ahead and give the uh, giveaway prizes from last time away right here at the beginning. The first giveaway was for the owl buttons. I have two sets to give away and they go to number 16. Peggy's V, that's Peggy from Louisiana. Whoops, I'm covering it up with my finger. And number nine, Denise Lace. And Denise is from Michigan. So you are both getting a pack of owl buttons. If you will give me your first and last names and your address uh, on Ravelry, go over there and personal message me. Um, this is like the fourth interruption. So I'm just gonna keep going here because the dog started digging on the carpet. Then he wanted me to pet him. The, you know, I forgot to draw the the, the giveaway. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with this now. Um, so whatever happens, it happens. Just get me your name and address. Um, you can find me as Corey at irocknits.com, irocknits Ravelry Group, irocknits on Instagram and Facebook, all the places. But if you wanna send me an email with your name and address, then I will get those buttons out to you. The winner of the Navy Cotton was number 19, Lasnit. That's Lisa from Tennessee. Hi, Lisa, I know Lisa. I have met Lisa. 
Uh, so I will send you that navy Aircania cotton out in the mail to you. And the orange cotton goes to number nine, Knitfrau from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's my hometown. So I'm assuming I know you because I've taught in Sioux Falls a number of times, but you don't have your first name on your Ravelry page, so I can't say hello to you. And I don't know for sure if I know you because although I might follow you on Instagram, I, I don't recognize that name. So Knitfrau from Sioux Falls. You are getting the orange yarn. So you must be a friend because you like orange cotton. You signed up for the orange. So the blue and the orange all going out in the mail this week along with the buttons. Let's go right into FOs. I finished a couple of sweaters for Christmas and so I'd like to show those to you today. Um, the first one is for my nephew. I think I showed my other, the little bitty niece's snowflake sweater last week from Tin Can Knits. Um, that one went so fast because she's, you know, three. Um, but this one, these kids are getting bigger. And so I think this may be the last year that they get full size sweaters because they are both fourth grade and they are knit, I'm knitting adult small. And so this one is um, not blocked. I use uh, the Cascade um, in the heavier weight, the Aaron weight. His favorite team is the Philadelphia Eagles. So I went out to the website and looked up the team color and then found this yarn, I think, on Jimmy Beans. They had all the colors um, so I could really match it. It's, it's about a perfect match. And then I ordered one of those little patches in Eagles patch. I have enough yarn left over to make a hat. So I don't know if I'll put the patch on the sweater or the hat. But um, I'm hoping to knit hats on my way on our, on our way to Sioux Falls this weekend. Could I do that in the car? I've got four hours, right? I could get that done. So that is that one. I have some blocking to do. It has been smooshed up in a bag and being carried around. You know, they get so bulky. Um, and then here is my niece's. This is going to probably blow out. But it's Madeline Tosh. And I made her short sleeve. She's hot-blooded and scratchy, so her mom says she prefers to have a long sleeve t-shirt underneath her sweaters and um, to not make them always in long sleeved. Um, this is Aaron Waite, um, Madeline Tosh in there heavier. It's a single ply, so it's gonna pill like the Dickens. Um, I didn't knit it as a, at a tighter gauge. That's one of the ways that you can kind of pre prevent some pilling is to knit at a very tight gauge because then you don't have the surface area um, to have the pills really happen as much. But these kids are growing so fast. I figured it's not going to last her probably until next year anyway. And I'll just tell her mom to shave it. Um, and we'll I'm work sure that her mother does not have a gleaner, but... If you don't know what a gleaner is, and I teach my sweater workshop, I, I often talk about the gleaner and people have not heard of it. I think most local yarn stores should carry a gleaner, but this is a gleaner. It comes with three different heads, different attachments, and the only reason that I think some people are not happy with their gleaners is because they're not using the right attachment for the sweater that they're shaving. So this works beautifully. And um, they come in travel sizes too, so there's a smaller price point. This end is like the little, not really Velcro, but brushed so that you can take them off. And then these just snap on and off with the little thing right here. And so you can put the other head on really easily and clean up your sweaters, especially, you know, underarms where you rub here and here. That's I think where most sweaters show most of their wear. And people think that they look um, worn. So you can go out and um, Google the gleaner or um, I think it's available at lots of places nationwide. But I'm going to say 20, less than $25, less than $20 comes in a little bag. G-L-E-E-N-E-R, the ultimate fuzz remover. remover. Um, there are some pictures on Instagram under the hashtag gleaner of people who have gleaned half their sweater and then left half of it with the, and the difference is amazing. So if you've never looked at that, or if you're looking for a quick last minute gift for a knitter or anyone in your life, actually, I mean, both my husband and um, my friends could use these because I've gifted them sweaters, right? So that would be an option for a single ply 
sweater like this. I knit both of these really similarly at the same gauge on the same needle. It is an Aran weight, 18 stitches. Here I have the pattern right here too. Here's the flax pattern. 18 stitches. It goes from zero to six months to 4XL. I mean, those tin can knits, ladies, they have got the, the grading. That's what you call it when you put a pattern in all the different sizes. The grading of the patterns down. I mean, it's exquisite that they can have that many sizes. Um, I have knit one once before, so I already had the pattern, so it was just easy for me to do it. I knit a couple of my, my patterns for the kids last year. I knit the Friendship Road, and so I just thought I'll make something. I really was looking for air weight. That was the key, because I have made the, um, the girl a fingering weight before. That's just so much knitting when they get to be tall, big kids, you know. So anyway, those are FOs for this week. Um, let's move on. I did a little shopping. Let's do confessions from a woman who shopped. First thing I purchased was while I was in Columbus, Ohio, in a hotel room with my knitting friends, and we had been to three yarn stores that day, we got online and ordered. So we ordered the Sven and Solve kits from Barrett Wool, Susan B. Anderson. Aren't they darling? It comes, it, it, the packaging is amazing. You get this bag and you get all the yarn to make. I think Amber checked with Susan and you can make both dolls if you don't do all the colors exactly the same and have enough left over to do another doll or doll and a half there's so much yarn available i mean it's just it's crazy and you got a little um pattern book sven scandinavian in here which i this is the same kind of book that you get when you do the wallaby sweater you get the little handwritten um, handmade book it's so cute I mean, Susan B. Anderson, I'm sure you don't watch this. I, I know you. I've met you a couple of times because I fawn over you when I see you. You have the pulse on the heart of a knitter. You're little, you are just holding the hearts of knitters in the palm of your hands. The little red union suit, darling, the snowman this week. I mean, come on. <laughs> How many more great ideas are you gonna have just this winter? <laughs> I can't keep up. The little snowman that has the little wreath that you can set the snowman in the little wreath, or you can put the little hat on his head or hang it on a... And I used to say all the time, I'm not a toy knitter, I'm not a toy knitter. And then I started knitting toys and, and hers are always so perfectly written. I mean, I'm... This is, I don't mean this in a bad way at all. She's a marketing genius. Everyone that sees these little characters that she makes, we're all saying, you know, I, I don't really want to knit toys, but I better buy that kit too. Buy another kit, buy another kit. They're so cute. So anyway, obviously I just got this in the last couple of days, so it's not going to be done, but I may cast it on. Um, at my parents' house this weekend so that at least it started. I love knitting color work and I think that would be really fun. We're going for just a couple days. Okay, can I reach the other thing that I purchased? A couple of years ago, Jill Draper Makes Stuff put out a kit for a sweater that I loved. And I think at the time, I might have said to my husband, I'd like that for Christmas. And then he didn't buy it. And he does Christmas Eve shopping. That's, that's my husband. He shops on Christmas Eve and there are only a few stores open that you can get things um, like a jewelry store. So he will often just say to my daughter, Kylie, I'm gonna run to the jewelry store while we're in Sioux Falls, the, the night before we're going to open gifts. I've gotten beautiful, wonderful jewelry. But that is the way that he, so this year I said, you know what? I never got that kit two years ago. I, I still would really like that kit. And I looked at her site and she had all of the colors except two. And so I sent her a message and I said, hey, I wanted to buy this kit two years ago. Didn't get it last year. Um, 
is there any way you could help me substitute the yarn colors in for those two colors that aren't on your site or will you have them in the future because I could have just bought you know four of the skeins and gotten two skeins later for the kit and um, and she got back to me and she said I think there are several in there that would work and I like more saturated colors which you all know and so this was kind of a pastel kit more of a pastel kit this is the rail trail sweater by Kristen Tendike. And so I swapped in two colors. I think it was the orange and the blue or the, the gold and the orange. So my kit came, this yarn, I love her stuff. Can I, t can I show you how it is not like other yarn? It is not superwash merino. It is 100% lamb's wool. This is in the Mohunk base, um, 370 yards, 338 meters to 113 grams. And these, I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be like all the other podcasters and see how many skeins of yarn I can hold at one time in my hands to make the sweater. There we go. So I got really close to almost all the colors for that beautiful sweater and this is going to be my either Christmas Day or New Year's Day cast on because you shouldn't just do one of those two right you should cast them on so I just think it's beautiful she had a lot of this still left in her in her shop so I'm going to make the the rail trail and do all that color work which will be super fun X's and O's I just think that it's really modern it has a, a square neck which I really liked the sleeves aren't big but they're not fitted at the bottom see how the sleeves not fitted at the bottom I it the, just the whole aesthetic of it I just think is really interesting so there confessions of a woman who shot chim chimney hat giant version this is the biggest one anybody has ever made should I put the glasses on with it? <laughs> Screenshot. <laughs> the Chim Chimney Hat Cal is going through December 31st. And I didn't have it in the thread. And I didn't know I didn't have it in the thread. Someone contacted me today. I'm sorry that I didn't have it in the thread. There have only been eight entries so far. And I've seen a lot of other people knitted on Instagram. So I know that people just haven't entered yet. But if you have until the end of the month, um, I could extend it. But I don't think anybody's going to be knitting Chim Chimney hats after the first, you know, the first of the year. So um, I wrote myself a little note to tell everybody that, oh, Jan. December 31st, not January. December 31st is the last day for the Chim Chimney um, Cow and to win the Chimney Bucket Bag, which is just darling. Okay, so, and you could start knitting them for next year, right? Do them for your whole family. Start them now because you're motivated and, and get those on the... So... I've been talking with a couple of people recently about problems with yarn color, um, bleeding, running, those kinds of things. Just seems like it's come up in my feed a couple of times. I was talking to Amber about it one day. She had um, some um, excess dye. And that's, so I'm gonna talk briefly about that today. Uh, one of the problems when dyers independently dye yarn is that they have to rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse. And they have to rinse until the water runs clear. And not always does their process allow for the water to ever run clear. So you might think that three rinses of the yarn is going to make it run clear, but they're taking large, you know, skeins of yarn out of large pans of water. And so not always does the water run clear. Not necessarily if you have water um, that is colored coming out of your yarn, does it mean that there's a problem with the dye process? That's just excess dye, and that will just run off. The problem is when it sets in other parts of the, of the yarn that you might be using. So commercial dye yarns are usually heat set, almost burned into um, some type of, you know, structure, they're using um, uh, so something to really have the the yarn hold that color, but Indie Dyers, um, 
I think are more likely to have yarn that runs. So we were talking about how you can fix it if you have something run. Well, number one is the color catcher. You can buy a sheet, a little box of color catchers um, in the detergent aisle of your grocery store and they come out looking like a um, fabric softener sheet and you put them in the water and they soak up all the excess dye. So they suck the excess dye. You can put it in your washing machine, you can put it in the sink, they suck the excess dye. But if you forget or um, haven't tested, that's the biggest suggestion I can give to people is you don't have to put your whole project in the water to see if it's gonna bleed yet. Just put a, some of the yarn in the water. You've got extra yarn, you've got a bit of yarn, just throw that in the water and soak it for 20 minutes and see if they, you've got excess dye coming out of that extra piece of yarn you have. But I had a shawl two years ago that was rainbow and it was cotton. Did not expect it to run and the red ran into the yellow. And so this is the product that I found that I purchased to get the dye out. So it's called Carbona, Carbona color run remover fixes color run accidents it says safe non-bleach formula on the bottom personally i think it's just kind of like a bleach it's a gentle color remover when you put a color remover that has on red dye that has gone into yellow not only does it take the red out but it takes some of the yellow so the yellow got lighter. But I was okay with that because at least the red was mostly gone. You, It comes in a little, I didn't use very much, but it comes in a little package. Like this, you know, it's like a paste. You make a little paste and then you put it on with a Q-tip or a toothbrush or something, scrub it in to the spot. I don't know if you could soak an entire garment in this. If you had a striped garment and it ran through the whole thing, what would happen? But if the project is ruined anyway, then this might be an option to get some of the color out of it. So dryer sheet, um, excess dye remover, sheets, and this. That's the, that's the two suggestions I have for people who have. I just sent this to someone on Instagram just the other day and said, I don't know if it'll help you, but maybe it will. Another thing that I was reading about this week, and I don't know if any of you have seen that this is coming, but there is a new knitting card game coming. Doesn't that sound fun? It's gonna be a Kickstarter. It's a card game about knitting featuring designers, indie dyers, and all the things that make the knitting community the best. I think it sounds great. The gal's name is Lisa or Lacey Z. I'm going to just hold it up. There she is. I printed it out. Lacey Z. And they are going to have a Kickstarter soon for this card game. So if you are a big gaming person or a big card person, you might want to go fund the Kickstarter when it comes. Because I bet some of the... Um, Bonus things that you can get are the actual cards ahead of time or pieces, parts of the community, you know, parts of the game. Um, community is one, yarn store is one, pattern is one. Yeah, I think it sounds fascinating, really fun. So you can go over and just follow Knitting the Card Game on Instagram. And we'll watch for that to come out. I think that should be pretty fun. Okay. I had a, co a couple of questions in the questions thread this week. Uh, Nan Randa, and you don't have your name, so I don't know if your name is Randa and you're the Nana. I'm not sure. Anyway, your question this week was, if it tells me to do short rows at the neck or I want to do short rows to raise the neck, how many do I do and when do I do them? And I should have probably touched on that last week when we did short rows. But here's my general answer to that. And as we all know, we take everything Corey says with a grain of salt, right? Opinion coming now. I would say that on a sweater, 
if you're knitting in the round, you could do the same thing if you're knitting back and forth. You would start at the center back for ease of discussion. You would come around to approximately 10 to 20 stitches past the front shoulder edge, go back around to the other side, come 10 to 20 stitches past the front shoulder or the, the shoulder seam, go back around, come to within five stitches of the last turn you did, go back around, come to within five. And you would do that, so you'd gone over to, you know, 10 past, let's say, maybe 20 past. It all depends on the weight of your yarn, how far you're gonna go past. So if you're doing worsted weight, you might go 10 past the seam. If you're doing fingering weight, you might go 20 because you can go down a little bit further. You're trying to raise the back higher. So then the next time you come back, you come to within five. I would do that four times for worsted to Aran weight yarn. I would do it six times for fingering. Opinion. That's how I would do it. I just come over, turn around, go back, turn around, go back, turn around, go back, done. Or if I'm on a lighter weight yarn, do it two more times. So then the next time I'd go within five stitches of the last time I wrapped and turned. So you really can do your own short row shaping. If that is, if things, you know, ride up on you or they don't stay down in the back, that's because the, you know, you need to do some extra rows in the back on the shoulders. So you just go back and forth across the back, wrapping and turning or whatever short row, you know, we talked about several last week, several that you do, you can just go back and forth. So Nan, I hope that helps. If it doesn't, if I'm not being clear, because I think I'm being clear, <laughs> but I've gotten interrupted like six times now. I've had to go and and do things and come back. So it's, I just feel really choppy today. Then reach out on Ravelry and I'll answer your question there. Maybe I'll still go and answer the question in the questions thread and try to be more succinct in my answer to you. And then I had a question from Sherry about fiber and projects. Sherry, I'm going to wait till next time. I have to think about that. I, I have to think about what I'm gonna say about what fibers to use for which proj projects and to give you a little bit better So answer. I don't know how many of you noticed that we're absent a couple of mannequins today. And that's because the sweater of the week is a visual representation of something that I want to teach you. And so we're going to do it a little bit differently. So. The sweater of the week this week is the Anhanga. Anhanga by Nora Gone. It is free on Ravelry. It was in a book. I had the book. I knit the sweater. This is the first sweater I talk about in the sweater workshop. And it's because I do it in alphabetical order and it starts with A, but it also provides the base for the rest of the things that we're going to talk about in the class when I do the sweater workshop. So here's the sweater. So it's got this neck and then it has this pleat and there's the bottom. And this is what I usually say to people. I hold it up like that at the beginning of class and then I say, I want you to think about whether or not you would knit this sweater. Is this something that is flattering? Do you think it would suit you to your style? Would it be flattering to your wardrobe? Is it something that would represent you? It's a long sleeved with this interesting, Norgon always has, I mean, she's an amazing designer. It's very interesting techniques. Her mind works mathematically, but just think about not the color, but whether or not you think you would knit this sweater. Okay, now I'm gonna pause for a minute and Put the sweater on. Hoping that this works as well as it does in class. And after I put the sweater on, you all got a visual of a body in that sweater. And it's completely different 
when it's on a body than when it's just held up flat. Now, I'm talking, you know, I'm two feet away from the screen here when I held it up, so I'm not sure that it worked as well as it does in person, but that was my goal. Let me just read you some of the description. This is an adult A-line bias, bottom-up cowl neck sweater, fitted, long-sleeved, positive ease, seamed, set in sleeves, swing, worked flat, and it's a written pattern. It has now been updated to have another weight of yarn. The one I knit is an Aran weight, just heavier than worsted. So I'm gonna say it was 18 to four inches. I could have been 16, I'm not sure. And the pattern page doesn't have it and I'm not going to stop this again to look it up. However, this is what happens when we look at clothes when we're out shopping and we're at Target or Kohl's and we put them in our cart or we're at the mall and we carry around an armful of clothing and we say, well, this might look okay, this might look okay, this might look okay. And then we go in the dressing room and we come out and nothing suited us. That's the problem with looking at sweaters at yarn stores that are hanging on hangers. And a lot of times, even when they're on a mannequin, because a lot of times the mannequin does not fit them the way the sweater should fit. So until you get a body in it, you don't know whether or not it would look good on you. You need to be able to ask your yarn store owners to try on samples. And if they have a trunk show, you need to show up at the trunk show. The number one thing I tell people in my sweater workshop is try these sweaters on. I bring 60 sweaters and I encourage people, I say, don't go home without trying them on. No one likes trying on sweaters. No one likes trying on clothes. It's hard to try on clothes. Very few people I know say, let's go spend an afternoon of it and try on clothes for the next three hours and get hot and feel terrible about how we look in those giant mirrors. <laughs> like, you know, especially if you put on something that's not flattering. How demoralizing can that be, right? But when you look at something with a body in it, it can really change the way it looks, especially on your body. Again, I'm gonna hark back to when I said last week, please take pictures and put them on Ravelry of you and your knitted items so that we can see a body in it. So maybe we could save ourselves from knitting something that wasn't gonna be flattering to us. This is a lovely design. This is rolled here, so it's stockinette and it rolls. And on this particular sweater, I'm hoping you can see it, there is a seam here and a seam here, and so you get this cross your heart, lifts and separates, right? Everybody remember the commercial from back in the day? That's a super flattering silhouette. And then you have this offset piece right here, which also rolls over here, and then the sleeves roll, at the bottom. So we've got all that matching, but then she was really smart and she didn't roll the back of the sweater. That is seed stitch because no woman wants a rolled back hem showing their hiney, right? I mean, that is not going to be flattering unless it hits you down below your rear end line, then maybe a rolled bottom would be okay but she's got a really nice silhouette here in the back with a seed stitch bottom and then set in or sewn in sleeves, which, you know, I love a good top down raglan. You know I do, because I design those quite a bit and they're easy to try on, but there is nothing like the fit of a set in sleeve on that shoulder. And I hope you could see that in the, the one I tried on for you. This is just a lovely, interesting take on a tunic for someone you could absolutely make this piece shorter or longer because you pick up right here and you knit this down so you could make it smaller and it would still provide that little pleat it hangs really nicely in the front it doesn't add i have a bit of a tummy um it does not add a lot of bulk it's it's really flattering on a number of bodies i have people come up and say you you say to try this on i'm just not sure about it and then they put it on and they say i'm really surprised at how flattering this silhouette was on me. It just, it's just a very nice 
you know, you've got this X here and the a V neck looks really nice on a lot of people. It opens up their neckline. It makes them, you know, narrower in through here. I just really like all the things that this sweater says at the beginning of my sweater class. Again, we can talk a lot about fit. We can talk about trying things on in stores. We can talk about, um, you know, how you would knit an entire sweater and you've never tried on that silhouette before. I mean, would you go into a, do you go into a store and buy sweaters and take them home and, and just wear them without knowing whether or not they fit? Not usually. I mean, occasionally you might, you know, for a sweatshirt, but not for a sweater. You would not just take it home and not try it on. So I just can't encourage people enough. And I know that there are yarn stores who are going to disagree with me and they're not going to wait and take those samples down and let you try them on. But I'll just have to change their minds slowly but surely one knitter at a time. <laughs> I just really feel like if we could all try on more things, if we went to more trunk shows, if we saw more sweaters, if we tried on our friends sweaters, if we got together with groups of knitters, um, and I've had people reach out to me and say, you're so fortunate. You have a, such a great yarn, you know, group you get together so often, you know, I made that happen in, in my life. I got, the Knitting Guild database from Minnesota 13 years ago. And I sent, I circled a part of the Twin Cities and looked up all the zip codes and sent letters out to people who, who belong to the knitting group and in the Knitting Guild and said, I'm looking for knitters to knit with. That makes me sound really desperate. <laughs> But I was, I just moved back to town and I needed to find where people were. The um, Knitting Guild in our area has a Ravelry group and on the Ravelry group, they have a list of places that people get together and knit and whether or not those groups are open or closed. Most of them are open and you can look up and see, you know, that people are knitting at the coffee shop in Minneapolis or at the Y up north and, you know, Coon Rapids or whatever. There are places that you can look to see. But that having, making a knitting group is partly your own responsibility. You, you have to find knitters who want to get together and then eventually work up to people who knit together, share projects and let people try on things like cowls and mittens and hats and scarves and then, you know, sweaters. I just think that it really is Something that not a lot of knitters think about that they're just going to sit down and by looking at a flat piece of paper say, well, I think that will look fine on me and I'm going to spend the next six weeks knitting it because not everybody has a ton of knitting time and then they're not happy with the fit at the end. So I'm hoping that by working through a lot of the sweaters in my sweater workshop, um, those of you that can't get to it, We'll get some tips and tricks from me on sweaters that might be flattering for you, like the Irish coffee from last week, the Anhinga from this week. Um, you kind of know what you like. It just might not be that you're getting the fit that you thought you would get because it's hard to tell. Take it or leave it, you know. Um, again, Corey has lots of opinions and I'm happy to share them all with you. Okay, a couple more things before we wrap up here because now it's completely pitch black out and I've got shadows and... Um, lights in my eyes because um, I had to set up more lights. The knit along for the mystery 12 days of knitting with leading men fiber arts is starting on December 26th. If you watch this tonight or tomorrow, well tomorrow, you will probably still have time to order the yarn and get it shipped to you because Steve and Andy are very fast. If you did not order the yarn and you still want to participate in the mystery knit along, that is absolutely fine. I am going to be sending out an update tomorrow, I believe, tomorrow Wednesday, with the yardage amounts, the exact yardage amounts listed for each part of the knit along. So that if you wanted to provide your own yarn from your own stash, it's fingering weight, and you know you bought two packs of gradients, so you bought 12 mini skeins, basically, um, and they were 20 gram mini skeins, but you do not come close to using all of the 20 grams. So it is definitely possible to participate in this and it is possible to trim the project back and not use 12 mini skeins. So if you want to be surprised, 
then you would just have to go with the flow and see how it works out for you in the first couple of days. If you don't want to be surprised, you can go out to the spoiler thread on my Ravelry group and I've had lots of people comment that they went to look at the project and they were so glad they did because that convinced them then that they wanted to knit along with me. And so that will happen for the 12 days after Christmas from December 26th to January 6th. And I hope a ton of you decide to join us, even if you don't think you can knit for the full 12 days. There, There is no deadline on you have to finish by tw t day 12, um, but it, it's just fun to participate in a group and something like that. And then the other thing that is out there for sale right now is um, the other knit along that the Carolina Fiberfest is happening. And I don't think I'm running that in my group. I think they're going to run that. But that is for the shawl. So Suburban Stitcher DK Weight, two skeins of DK Weight yarn in the Suburban Stitcher. Let's show the front side, not the back side. Well, the back side is pretty too. <laughs> Diane put up all her DK Weight skeins. She had a huge update. Um, I left it for several days, letting those of you get out there and pick your yarns. But then last night I ordered six skeins. <laughs> six skeins of her DK because it's the best. Leading Men Fiber Arts and Diane Suburban Stitcher have the best DK, the best base. It's just wonderful. So this is um, faded lavender um, colorway, but as you can see, you could do it in just about any colorway because there's not a whole lot of texture or lace going on. I even had a test knitter stripe it. She did self-striping DK weight yarn. Um, and that is a January, February, March knit along, and then you're supposed to wear them when you go to the Carolina Fiber Fest. That doesn't mean that everyone else can't participate. I'll probably put up a thread in my group and give away, maybe I'll give away uh, um, some yarn um, for people that are knitting along that might not be going to the Carolina Fiber Fest. Um, that's fine with me, but Diane has a ton of DK weight yarn in her shop right now um, if you wanna splurge and give yourself a little treat for Christmas because we still have a week here and I ordered myself some more. I'm going to knit this up in a couple of other colorways because it is so wearable. Um, this pattern is not up on Ravelry yet. It is at the graphic designer. She's um, laying it out right now and it will go up on Ravelry that first week in January uh, along with the crochet project. So for those of you that are crocheters and never get a chance to do a knit along, there's going to be a crochet project for this um, for the Carolina Fiber Fest too. So they commissioned a design um, from someone and that will go up the first week of January as well. So um, that's kind of fun and different. But anyway, um, so I did want to touch base on both those yarns because they are available. And then I'm going to share another little story with all of you. Okay, I'm going to end today with Corey stories. I have one more little story to tell you. Once upon a time, there was a woman in her late 50s who was often forgetful. I went to the basement to get a tablecloth because I had all of my knitting group over for a big luncheon last week. And when I was in the basement, the ladies had done all the decorating already. I found um, a box with a bunch of presents in it presents that should have been gifted last year. And so I thought to myself, didn't you give presents to these women last year? And I did, but I had also purchased other presents for everyone in my knitting group. So I thought in the, the spirit of forgetfulness that I would share the gift that I gave to everyone this year. This is the ornament that I purchased over a year ago. On a clearance table. They had tons of them. <laughs> thinking, I probably thinking that I was very smart. So it was either after Thanksgiving or right around Christmas time. And I put them in this bag in the basement. And there they were <laughs> when I went down there this year. So everyone, they're metal. You probably could still find them out there. They're studio decor. Um, Holiday Noel, they say you put a picture in there or you can just leave the, the tree in there. Um, I sent them, I had a ton of them. I must have, I remember going online and finding a few more because I didn't think I had enough because I was going to gift them to everyone. And then there they were 
in the basement. So this week, your prompt for the giveaway is going to be, have you ever forgotten to gift a present and then found it later? Because then I will feel better about my lack of organization. Um, the giveaway this week is a, take it out of the package, a jewel closure, jewel designs, J-U-L, and this is the closure. It's one of the leather ones. You can use it to put on a scarf or shawl. Say you were gonna wrap this over your shoulder and then you wanted to put it here. You would unscrew the back and it comes off and then these four pieces could go into the knitting and then you screw them in from the back and then it stays there permanently which can make uh, an item into a wearable object immediately because if you don't ever take that out you can just pull it over your head and go and it you know for shawls I use this a lot in my shawl class when I talk about closures and ways to wear things because there are so many shawls that people don't wear because they can't keep them on so if you have you know a way that you like to wear like this one's so nice and long you can tie it you can do all kinds of things with it and then you could put the closure on it as decoration you could put it up the closure up by your neck you could put it down you could just wrap it once around your shoulders and put it on there so anyway it's a really nice piece it's leather and if you want to go out to the Ravelry group and share, tell a little tale on yourself on whether or not you have ever found gifts in your basement uh, and then given them the next year. I can't be the only one, right, that has ever purchased gifts for people that have had that happen. But anyway, um, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. I will podcast again on the December 31st, I think, the last day of the month. And we have a little surprise up our, our sleeves for the last podcast um, at our house. So hopefully that'll be a lot of fun. And um, please keep reaching out to me, asking me questions, um, talking to me about questions that are like maybe just a one-on-one -on -one answer. I've had a couple of people you know, say that they didn't need it answered on the podcast, but they wanted my opinion on something. I'm more than happy to do that. I have um, really enjoyed the first nine episodes of, of doing this podcast and um, getting really close to having a thousand subscribers already, which to me is just <laughs> mind blowing. One of the nicest things you can do for podcasters this time of year is subscribe. Even if you don't watch a lot of video podcasts or you don't plan to watch this one every time, if it doesn't hurt you to hit the subscribe button and have it come up in your feed, then that's just a really nice thing to do for me. And then it helps other people find this podcast when they Google knitting podcasts in YouTube. Then um, the more followers people have or subscribers, the more likely it is to pop up in someone else's feed. And then that's just a really... That's a nice thing for me. So uh, until next time, keep it colorful.